My name is Jeffrey, Jeffrey John Beale. Jeffrey Beale, I make the devil squeal. Jesus and I, we opened a, sh a, a shop right in the main street of places like Sydney. Now we, we've got all the McDonald's and Hungry Jacks to work from, but they pay the rent, they do the washing up. Up in Queensland cities, Jesus would pick a shop, open the door in front of me, and then say, right, take it over, just put Jesus on the window, and invite the people from the hospitals in wheelchairs and crutches and things like that. Invite all the sick and the poor and the needy and tell the priests when they're wondering what to do next. Five police cars, please. Pick up all the homeless, all the drunks, all the drug addicts, all the young people. Bring them down to Jesus' place, his place, Jesus' center. And when they come, maybe with crutches and they're gonna have the leg cut off, they say, what are you doing here? This is Jesus' place. What do you want, coffee or a miracle? Oh, I need a miracle, can you help me? I was traveling traveling for Jesus around the islands, Thursday Island, places like that, Fiji, etc. And uh, when I flew into Fiji, into, well, also into Thursday Island, we had a revival, but after I finished there, the Lord Jesus said, you can, you can take your friends and family, head back to Australia quickly. So I came and there's no way I can get back because I have no money. See, these days you need money. But when the Lord Jesus comes back, he just says, no more money, a lot of honey, but no money. No more banks, cranks, tanks, or yanks. A thousand years, but now most of us still need money. So I said, Lord, come on, with two dollars, how am I going to get back to Australia? He says, well, there'll be a boat waiting for you. And there was a bunch of boats down there at the wharf next day. He said, get up early and head down there quick, smart. Everyone agreed, we prayed, and I went down. And this guy said, look, I've just lost my cook. Can you cook? I said, yeah. He says, hop on, uh, hop on the boat. And for four or five days, I'm stuck trying to get back to Cairns. And I have to calm the sea and bring the sun out because it was the roughest weather we'd ever been in. The Lord Jesus gave me permission. Sometimes up in New Queensland, he gives me permission to drive without petrol. If I get stuck going across the border into the Northern Territory to see the big Avon Downs, the biggest cattle station in the country, and then get there and there's no petrol to get back again when I've got a meeting in Queensland that night. So we bow our heads in the car and the Lord says, drive without petrol this time. You've got to be in Queensland tonight. And we get back to Camelwheel, the little town there, the whole town gets saved. That's the second outreach in six weeks, but the whole town except for one person got saved that night. So it was good that I drove without petrol and got there. But my friend and I, next day, were saying, Lord, is it all right to go hundreds of k's back to Mount Isra, our base at the moment, without petrol? He says, no, you've got two dollars, use it. So we drive without two, we're just two dollars, and we're getting in the middle of the two towns, we can see the level of the petrol going down, down, down. We said, do you mind, Lord, what's gonna happen? He says, don't, don't need to drive without petrol, just put your hand up. And as soon as we open the door and step out, there's a Land Rover pulls in with two 44-gallon drums of petrol, public petrol in. And we get back and the whole town of Mount Isa was called Gomorrah of the Northwest. We'd just done Townsville, Sodom of the North. Crime had come to halt there. The police get promoted. But we have a PA system in Townsville, Mount Isa. You can hear it all over town. You can hear it up in the hill. We, you know, there's got a, they've got a hill in those towns. They haven't got one right here in Sydney, but... The Lord Jesus and I work every day on around the suburbs on the buses and trains. Sometimes I'm driving different taxis and getting around the suburbs to reach the people here. It's hundreds of suburbs. But they come from every part of the world. They're important to God. So that he can reach out from here to the whole world in these last days. Get the harvest up and then he'll come and take us out. When he takes us out then, he'll burn the rest out because they'll have their World War III and four. They get rid of all the cars, boats, planes, railway lines, trains, land posts and everything. The buildings, the Bible says, will tumble, the mountains will crumble, but the Lord will save the humble. So billions of people will be going up for the feast while on earth they cop the beast. Once we're gone, there they can have the little world government. The world government is going to be called the beast. And his number is not cucumber, it's 666. It's like the barcode already going on many things will be forced into people's hands or foreheads if they haven't already got the mobile with it in. Because every mobile has got the 666 microchip hooked up to the only big bank in the world, the German bank. Germany, France and Spain. They're trying to come again. But they call it the EEC. This is JC country. Go jump. We have the kangaroo here. Australia. The great south, the of the Holy Ghost. We don't need your mobiles, your microchips. We're not a bunch of grips. Aussies are smart. We come from every part of the world. We click a mouse, we reach every house. 
and we've got Jesus as our king, that's the main thing. And we're getting ready to go for the feast. Why hang around with the beast? It's coming after World War III. The Antichrist will pop up in Jerusalem saying, here I am, I'm the latest and greatest. They won't like him. They didn't like Hitler. Hitler was a nice little fella. He, he only had ooh, a, a few machine guns maybe and a few tanks. But this guy is going to click a mouse. He's going to have nucleus and all kinds of things. But he'll knock out three nations at a time. The Antichrist, the world government of Satan, will last seven years only. But the Jews will wake up and say, oh, we're making our apology, Lord, come and save us, quick. <laughs> We've killed the wrong man 2,000 years ago. Come and save us, Lord, forgive us. He said, look, I died. Uh, uh, now it's finished up there on the cross. He said, now everyone can get on board. I've paid the price for everyone. It's very nice, but I can't do it twice. It's finished. And then he did the devil in, rose from the dead, and like Hitler, Hitler never rose. But Jesus rose the third day. I rose the third week, I was killed up here in the expressway. But Jesus and I were driving up, leaving Sydney in my brand new car that day, up in the middle of the expressway, up near Gosford. I got killed because I said, Lord, looks like I might get killed. He said, yeah, you didn't get new tires, you better pray. I said, yeah, I'm heading for Townsville, Lord. Come on, quick. He said, pray. I said, okay, one, if I have an accident, protect my body. But I said, if, and if I get killed, he said, you don't want to come to heaven now, do you? I said, no. Raise me from the dead and bang I was dead. The other car was coming as the last remember for the next three weeks I was dead. They cut my body out some of it. They left some of my brains in the car Then they cut more out when they finally got me to Sydney to a hospital that could do something They said look what we can do is cut more brain out and clean him up. He's a vegetable. This side's all plastic now I had to replace it and pray so I could use my left side. My left side I was supposed to be in a wheelchair But I said look I don't like wheelchairs. I'm a Christian goodbye and I ran away. I'd only been dead for three weeks, <laughs> and the doctors and nurses are scratching their heads. Never seen anything. Ooh, how are we going to walk? How are we going to get out of bed? I said, look, I'll act on the Bible. God will make it good, and I'll be normal. And God backed me. Two doors, two nurses walked in, the doors opened, so I ran away. I was gone. I'd only been there lying in an ice bed for three weeks after I was killed. And then they finally put me in a bed. And I watched the doctors come in every day and scratch their heads and finally when I heard them whispering about wheelchairs I knew I'd had an accident. I couldn't see that I had a hole in my head and no hair and a big hole, brain missing and everything. But I, I looked like a skinny dead rake with a hole in my head, no hair, they'd cut it off so I just got and had a look in the mirror as soon as I got home. And I said, Lord, I asked you to raise me from the dead, but not a whole head. He said, come on, just get the plastic plug, Jeff. You're still, you're almost still, still on my payroll. And within six months, I had my hair grown again. I could get the plastic plug. And then I've been working for Jesus for 40 odd years since that. And Muslims come up five at a time, sometimes over the road here or somewhere around here. Do you, you work for Jesus? Does he pay? I said, what do you mean does he pay? He owns everything, mate, but he's going to knock it all down soon. Buildings will come, mountains will come, but they say, does he pay well? Ooh, they get interested now. But look, he owns the banks. Of course he does. <laughs> and I might spend millions of dollars at a time, sometimes on youth centers, drop-ins and things like that. But we bring crime to a halt because Jesus just gets his word out and brings the faith that transforms their fear into action. And then they can put the devil in traction. Say, goodbye, devil. He sits on their shoulder and whispers, smoke this, drink this, drink, or, or cop this cancer demon or something. We just cast it out in Jesus' name. I was praying for a guy yesterday who had just half a leg. You know, sometimes we pray and we see new toes grow and new legs grow and new hearts, of course. Sometimes when I'm preaching, a guy might just collapse and scream as he crosses the road and his heart's gone and blood's pouring out his nose and his, his mouth all over the road. And, I tell him, look, get up. He's trying to follow me. Get up and walk in Jesus' name. So he gets up and walks. He says, Jeff, I better go to the hospital. Check us out. When he comes back an hour or so later, he's been totally healed. The doctor says his heart was gone, but now he's okay. 